side here, you can see these almost like hinges here uh, in the rib cage. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start long smooth strokes just to kind of pull the um, breast off of the uh, rib cage. I got a little piece of cartilage uh, underneath my knife. Remember I told you that it was very, very soft bone here. It's almost rubbery. And so what I'm doing, you can kind of see, I'm pressing my knife, I'm flexing my knife against that bird carcass, the frame, if you will. Long, smooth strokes and try and pull it off of there as cleanly as you can. Now I'm almost done with this side. This duck breast doesn't, isn't very thick. And so I think that's about as far as I can take it. There's still a little cartilage there, but I think I'm kind of coming out on the other side of this. I'm running into wishbone as well. I did not remove the wishbone on this fellow. I could have done that and shown it to you. The wishbone is out in front here. Let me show it to you. It's kind of where the neck opening is. Like think of all those like clavicle bones that you guys have. I don't think a bird has a clavicle, but that's a wishbone on a duck. It doesn't have a handle at the top. It's just a U shape, okay? So that's a duck wishbone. A little bit of meat I left behind on that, bad chef. That's going in my stock pot. Okay, I'm gonna go around to the other side of this duck and start removing the breast off of this side. We're almost done deboning this duck. And so the, uh, the cage is kind of off of the duck at the back end here. And now I start going into that breast meat and pulling it away from the rib cage. And it's just, you're kind of going through membranes here. That's all. My knife just went through those ribs like it was nothing. This is very, very soft stuff here. And now I'm getting to the real nitty gritty, past the ribs, and now I'm into that hard plate where the um, breast meat resides. I just kind of ran into a duck tender. I don't think you can see it from your angle there. But look at that, the duck is just hanging by a thread this is all duck over here and this is all rib cage over here. It's just really hanging by a thread. So I'm just gonna kind of pull that away and then I can just trim the cartilage away at the end of this job here. And we're just holding on by this one thread here. I'm just gonna kind of cut through that. There's my frame, okay? That's gonna go into a stock pot. I could kind of cut this guy up so he can, I'm gonna roast him underneath my, uh, duck later. So I just kind of pull it apart. Uh, again, really, really soft, right? Cartilage instead of calcified bone there. That makes a very uh, gelatinous stock. There's the inside. Lots going on there. Lots of flavor. Okay. So what I've got here, this duck, by the way, it's it's been out for a little while while I've been working on it. And it's very, very soft right now. This is very fatty and that fat it's, it's um, softer fat than butter is, okay? Duck fat is much softer than butter at room temperature. By the way, there's a little piece of trachea right there I'm gonna remove, and I don't think I wanna throw that in my stock pot there, guys. I'm going into the, uh, 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 the garbage can with that guy. Um, I've got a lot of excess skin here that I'm gonna leave alone because duck skin is my, my friend when I'm doing this little project here. I've got a little bit of cartilage here where we got that, uh, uh, I didn't really get it off as cleanly as I could have. There's a little bit of weird material in here. And so let me just kind of clean things up slightly so you can kind of see what's going on with the inside of a duck here once it's been boned out. All of these little bits and bobs are going into my stock pot. There are some, uh, as I said, like cartilage right here, that's coming off. And I really don't want to cut all the way through into the bottom of this. That's a piece of meat, so I'm saving that. And a little bit of cartilage there. Kind of need to turn my board because of the camera here is running into my hand. So again, just cleaning things up. There's a little bit of silver skin there and other disgusting tissue that I want to remove. Okay, that, it's not disgusting. It can go in my stock pot, but I just don't want it for my beautiful, beautiful duck. 
Beautiful duck. Oh yeah. So I don't know if you're kind of seeing it, but what I'm doing here, here see this connective tissue right here, that silver skin that we call it, okay? I'm making a little tab with the tip of my knife getting underneath there. I just made a tab that I can hold on to, and then I kind of grab it and I pull out towards the camera and I take my knife and go underneath it and shave that out. And that's how I remove membranes from the surface of meats and things like that. This is how we do, pork, uh, do tenderloins and things. Now, I mentioned a duck uh, tenderloin. Here's a tenderloin right here. Duck tenderloins are very small and flat, but we'll be using that guy. And you can see there's a little tendon running down that guy. I'll try and trim him out possibly. Um, let's see, I don't see, where's my little duck tender on this side? I don't really see him. I must have uh, destroyed him in some way. I don't see him. He's not on that side. Okay. Okay, so you can clearly see the outline of a few duck breasts right there. And uh, what else we have here are my legs and I have my arm meat as well. Arm, it's my wing meat. And with that stuff, I'm just going to be pulling that all out and using that to make a sausage today. This is going to be my force meat. So let me grab a bowl that I'm going to be using. I have an iced bowl, and I'm going to start pulling out some of this meat to use. So getting a quick little rinse, a little soapy goodness. And you guys can see the breast meat there clearly. Big piece of skin there. Skin is your friend. It's my friend. I'm going to take a little sip of coffee. Hope you guys are hanging in there. We've been at it for about an hour now. And we're getting into force meats next. La la la. So sorry about that. Transitioning. And I was grabbing a bowl. Okay, and what I want to show you is I've got a, two bowls here with ice in between them. As we're working with sausage, we want everything ice, ice cold. And so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just start removing all of this leg meat. And I should be able to mostly pull it off of here, I'm hoping. Boop, 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 if I can get a hold of it. And I want to be really careful not to tear the skin. But there goes my leg meat. Now this is holding on much more than a chicken does. Or kind of, a, I don't want to tear it. There's a little bit of meat right there and I'll throw all this in. And I'm just going to have to shave it out because I don't want to uh, tear the skin. There's a little piece of bone there that I got to clean up. Stock pot. Let me do this. There we go. And I'm getting all of that leg meat off. If you're doing a chicken, this comes off much easier. By the way, this all works with chicken. And there's a lot of, of that connective tissue in this last little knob here. And so I'm going to just take that off. It looks like a devil's tongue out of a, out of a beef. Okay. And I just, so I just got all of that um, meat off of the leg there. There's a little bit of meat around this uh, wing as well. And so I'll just shave that away. This is all the tough stuff. Ducks actually use their wings. By the way, all that meat's going in there. I made a little tab and I'm shaving it on out, piece by piece. I want all of this duck meat. About as much as I can get there. I'm gonna get the rest of this leg meat on the other side. There goes a big bunch of it right there, rolling right off. This duck skin is getting incredibly soft right now. I want to work a little faster here. Get this off. And there's that really, really tough stuff. I'm just going to remove that little bit there because I'll never get all those pieces out. And the rest of that's going to get cut up. And the breast meat, 
I am going to go ahead and remove the breast as uh, I'm gonna kind of butterfly it off of there. I found another little piece of cartilage. I'm gonna butterfly the breast meat off and we're gonna lay it out on our duck skin. And we're gonna cover as much duck skin with breast as we possibly can. Oh, I've got a little more meat here, this wing area that's gotta come off. You can see I'm just kind of pushing it away from myself. And there we go. And so there's a little more meat. I felt another little piece of bone right there. There it goes. And we have our breast meat here, okay? What I wanted to do was go ahead and remove the breast meat as well. There she goes. And it's just gonna leave the duck skin. Almost there. And a little tear. And it's okay to leave a little of that breast behind. So there's one piece of breast. You guys see where we're going with this. I'm going to encase everything in a skin. Little excess. Any little uh, meaty bits go into your sausage. And here goes my other duck breast. There she goes. That came off nicely. All right. And now I've got my skin. Now, what I want to do with this is I'm turning my wings inside out. So the fold or the hole is basically on the inside. So where's my other wing here? Where'd the other one go? There it is. So that guy's inside out. And I do the same with the legs. Legs are inside out. The breast meat is off to the side. All of these little bits and pieces can go in a stock pot or get worked right into the sausage. Okay, I think I'm gonna kind of cut this down, this duck skin right here. It's just a little big, so I'm gonna use that for other purposes. I might even just roast that off underneath my duck and uh, use the fat from it. I'm gonna kind of trim the other end, just kind of squaring things off here. But that is basically my duck skin. And I'm kind of ready to go with the next stage. So another scene change here. Actually, before I do a scene change, let me do this. Now I want to, as this roast, I see a little piece of a hole there, actually. I just noticed a hole that I got that I didn't notice before. I had a little piece of skin. And so I'm going to go ahead and lay that piece of skin inside like a bicycle patch. Another thing I want to do is poke holes in this because we're going to be roasting this in a little while. So uh, let's see, where's my little Sharpie knife or Sharpie fork? I'll just use a regular fork. I'm going to go through this and jab this skin all the way across. So as this roasts, fat underneath the skin can render out. I don't do this with chicken. Duck is fairly fatty. This isn't super fatty duck, by the way. But you guys get the idea. I'm picking it from the outside, I'm just doing the inside. Going all the way through. That should be nicely docked, if you will. A lot of fat down on this end. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this out on a uh, sheet pan with a little bit of plastic wrap. So I've been chilling a sheet pan in the freezer. Kind of stuck in my fingers here. And I'm going to lay down a little plastic. This plastic is going to help us uh, roll it. If you don't have plastic under there, it's really tough to work with later. So that's going to be our friend. And then I'm going to take this piece of skin and I'm just going to fold it into quarters. Sorry, guys. Let's see if you can see. Fish. There you go. I'm going to fold it into quarters. And then I'm going to un lay it down and unfold it in quarters. And there she goes. All right. So that's all ready for the next step. And the next step is to lay out some 
duck breast on there. I want to cover as much of this with duck breast as I can. So I'm cleaning up a little bit of the yuckiness on here. We're going to wipe down really well at the end of this. And I want to switch knives here. This stuff's been on ice. Everything's nice and cold. My meat's nice and cold. And I'm going to grab one more knife. And this is an old school knife, but it's the only one I have that's uh, super long and flexible. This is the kind of blade we use for making super, super thin slices, right? Smoked salmon, stuff like that. Long and flexible, okay? So I'm going to get these pieces off of here. I'm going to go at an angle. I'm going to kind of angle my breast and I'm angling the knife. And I'm really, really bending that knife and holding my hand flat right on that meat. And I can get paper thin cuts like that, that I can kind of lay out on my duck skin. Next one. See that thing just bending, right? So I want to get as much coverage as I can on that duck skin. I'm going a little too thin here. I'm going to throw that in my sausage. I'll tell you what it is, is this funny angle. Let me turn it. I'm trying to give you an angle that you guys can see. And now I'm kind of off the board. There we go. There's a good one. I'll go this direction. There we go. All right, so I'm going to start laying down duck breast meat over here. You guys get the idea. Actually, let me do all the cutting. I think you guys will see better that way. Still figuring out the flow here. There's my breast. I got a little weird bit hanging off of there. There's some nice slices. That's what I'm talking about. Got a little, uh, I had a little uh, uh, silver skin in there. Beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. I think I had the left-sided breast earlier. Womp. Okay, and I think maybe one more cut. And there it is, okay? So now I'm gonna lay it all out and kind of adjust. I hope you guys can kind of see, yeah, maybe. There we go. Lay it all down. And I'm just gonna stay kind of near the center until I know how much I have. You guys get the idea? Okay, so we're covering it up. So we've got skin on the outside. We got meat rolling up the, the, the middle, basically, or not up the middle. We got meat rolling up next. And then we're gonna have some sausage up the center of this thing, okay? I'm just gonna kind of uh, bring it around. You guys have the idea. Now, there is a lot of extra skin here. This is uh, probably more skin than I need. But for now, I'm just going to kind of leave it alone, kind of work this little piece back in there. And we're going to chill this guy because everything is super, super warm. The next step is making a force meat. I'm going to crank out a super quick force meat and talk about those a little bit. This is like making, this is the talk with, that we have about making sausage and things like that. Now, I'm still working with the board here. I'm going to get rid of this. Let's see, let's see. Okay, yeah, so I'm still doing meat here. Let me chill this. We've still got the duck cell going in there. It's getting a little warm in here. 
Um, we still have uh, all of this meat on the board and I'm gonna kind of use a Cuisinart basically, a food processor to chop it all up. But before I do, there's lots of connective tissue and like sinew and things like that. So I'm gonna go through this really quick. And if, if there's any sinew I can't clean out, I'm gonna make sure that I get my knife through it a couple of times. So it's not long pieces of sinew that'll never break down. It'll just be tiny little bits, okay? And so uh, I'm gonna pull out my meat and set it on the board. We were just working on this board and this meat's just on ice. It's all nice and cold. And as we're working with force meats, that is the number one thing to talk about is your meat needs to be ice cold. So I'm just going to work my knife through this while I talk, okay? If your meat is not ice cold, what you're going to do, what you're going to have is kind of a separated sausage or, or meatloaf or dumpling filling or whatever it is. We want the proteins, the meat to be ice, ice cold. And we also want any fats that we use to be ice, ice cold. And if we can have those two things together, nice and cold, the fats and the proteins, well, let's just say they become one. If you've heard the, the, the term emulsion before, um, uh, they emulsify together. We emulsify salad dressings and we also uh, emulsify meaty preparations like sausage and dumpling fillings and things like that, okay? So again, the big thing is cold. If I can keep things cold, the fat doesn't melt and turn oily and it will stay in the protein when I try and cook this stuff and it will be nice and nice and juicy, okay? Fat is, is not juice, right? Like water is juicy, right? But Fat gives you that perception of juiciness as you're eating a sausage or a pate or anything like that. Meatloaf, right? Have you guys ever had a meatloaf that's been all dried out? It's really, really nasty, right? And so we need ways to kind of keep the fat in these, these uh, uh, emulsions, these, these force meats. So again, I'm just kind of running my knife through here. I haven't run into any really, really heavy connective tissue. The little white bits there are fat, okay? And fat is our friend here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just, I'm, I'm laying that meat that I just minced up in the bowl on ice. It's an iced bowl. Now I got a pretty heavy piece of connective tissue right there. I'm just gonna kind of cut that off and get rid of it. Just kind of look for that stuff. And there's another, but otherwise, I'm just kind of mincing through any other little bits of connective tissue. And this is just kind of a pre-step before I use it in the, uh, the food processor bowl that I have over here. And I have a really cheesy one. This is Quarantine Kitchen and isn't like what I work with at work. Ah, at the old, at the old job in the old days, in the time before COVID. Okay, again, just kind of rolling through this stuff. I felt a big piece of connective tissue right there. He's going bye-bye. That didn't need to be in there. And again, just breaking down sinews that my little food processor won't. If you're just using a food processor, you need to do this step. In the uh, butcher shops, we will do what we call progressive grinding, where we'll grind through one size die with uh, big holes, and then we grind through a smaller die on the on the grinding machine with smaller holes and then we finally go through a fine die that gives us really really fine ground product and that's what we use for like fine pate and things like that progressive grind there are different types of force meat i should say i was talking about emulsified force meats where everything is all one okay um you've seen like bologna and hot dogs right it's all one color it doesn't look like ground meat it looks like paste almost, right? Those are emulsified sausages. Mortadella has those big old chunks of fat floating around in it. That's a that's an emulsified sausage. They have a, a type of a, a force meat or sausage called a gratin where you take about, you know, a, a quarter of the meat and, and cook it off a little bit. Like you could grill it and get a little grill flavor on it and then chill it and make a sausage or a stuffing out of it. So that'd be a gratin. Campagna, is usually really rough, rough ground, like you see a, a pate maison or house pate. That's a campagna type of a forced meat, typically. Okay, I've minced up the rest of that meat. It's all going in a bowl together. And I'm just kind of scraping things up here. All of that is my meat, and I want it. So I want it. Finally, another type of forced meat 
I'm going to keep talking while I clean up, okay? Let's go over here and you can kind of watch me wash up while I talk about this. The last type of force meat I wanted to talk about is a mousseline, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, what is a mousseline type force meat? Well, what does mousse sound like? It seems like chocolate mousse or chicken liver mousse or any other mousse you ever saw has always been aerated. It's light. It's fluffy, right? And so a mousseline is a sausage that's kind of lighter and fluffier, and it's not made in a traditional way like a, a, a ground meat sausage, like Italian sausage or breakfast or something like that is made, or uh, your kielbasas and all of that good stuff. It is made more like uh, uh, in, in, in the bowl of a food processor or something like you're going to see here. It's typically not using like a pork fat or something like a sausage would. It's typically using like egg whites and maybe a little bit of cream. OK, and so uh, I'm actually just going to use this duck meat today and a little bit of cream to lighten it up, give it a little more fat, because again, fat is the perception of moisture. Right. And so uh, I'm going to do very, very simple ingredients here, but I need to clean everything up before I get into it. OK, so uh, I'm going to put this meat on ice back in the fridge so it's nice and cold. Your, uh, your meats always need to stay cold. Oh boy, I don't think I can fit it in there, but it is on ice. I just don't have the room. Oh yeah, it'll fit, it'll fit. Do it like this. That looks beautifully. Yes, I fit it in there. Okay, all of these duck bones, they're going to be coming in handy. I got to get rid of this board, I think. I think I'm done with this board. I'm going to rinse it just in case. And I'll give it a good wash. We might need it. Okay, 1130. I'm not sure if I can fit this into a two hour class. Uh, Facebook might shut me off. If Facebook shuts me off, I'll uh, just start over. I'll start it up again. We don't have too much more to go, but we do have a little bit to go. I always have so much to talk about. There's always so much. Uh, and I spend a ton of time cleaning. Whew. Okay, get rid of this puppy. A little quick wipe down. And we are going to get into making a sausage here. Let me see if anybody's got a uh, comment or question or a thought or a feeling they would like to share with the group. Let me uh, bump onto the other screen here. And it looks like I got Isabel. Uh-oh, daughter's a vegetarian. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. No, that's all right. We like vegetarians. All right, boom, boom, boom. I don't see too many comments other than saying, hey, hey, what's up, what's up? So uh, let me pull over another uh, machine over here. That's what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a quick duck mousseline out of all that duck breast. One thing I should point, point out, did you see the color of duck breast, right? Duck breast looks nothing like chicken breast. Ducks actually get exercise, and when they exercise, they tend to uh, get a lot redder meat, okay? And they tend to get a lot tougher meat. Their meat tends to be, hey, a little more characteristic flavor to it and things like that, right? Ducks actually exercise. Now, this is a really, really loud machine. I don't like it very much, but uh, let's take a look at it, okay? Typical food processor. This is just kind of a little, a little dinky one, okay? But uh, this guy, I've got your bowl. Um, when you are working with your bowl, always, always make sure that blade is in there before you start throwing things in there, right? That's like one of the biggest mistakes people make, okay? Now, for this one, I'm really just going to make a standard duck uh, uh, um, force meat, and then I'm going to fold. I'm going to make it taste good and everything, but then I'm going to fold in that duck cell, which also tastes good, too. So that'll be the other half of my film. For now, let me grab this duck out. It wasn't in the fridge for very long. We're just making a greater point of really, really keeping stuff cold all the time. Okay, so you want a little spatula for this always when you're doing these food processor jobs. You want a spatula. Don't get rid of that ice bowl. You're going to want it. I'm throwing in all of that meat that has been previously minced. And really, all I'm doing is a little salt pepper here. Okay, uh, salt pepper, a little cream, super, super simple. Okay, I'm going to crack a bunch of pepper in now. A bunch. Why not? out. So half of the filling is going to be the duck leg meat and the duck wing meat, which is too tough to really just roast off anyway. I'd want to almost stew that stuff or make a confit out of it or something. I'm going to add some salt in here so it blends early on. 